that's passing through here. Finance Minister Nazim Burke and his OECS colleagues are in St. Lucia discussing a number of pertinent issues. These include the OECS Economic Union, ECCU 8 Point Stabilization and Growth Program, and relations with the World Bank. On Friday, the heads of government and ministers of finance will meet senior members of the World Bank Group to discuss growth, energy, debt, financial stability, and safety nets. Minister Burke is the current chairman of the Monetary Council, the ECC Group of Finance Ministers. Meanwhile, a group of experts is taking a critical look at the document that governs the operations of regional grouping CARICOM. The revised Treaty of Chagaramas, an intergovernmental task force, is examining ways of amending the treaty. Its chairman, CARICOM Secretary General Edwin Carrington, says some of the work of the task force will eventually be part of a protocol aimed at improving the management of the region. Among the decisions expected to eventually be part of the amended revised treaty is the inclusion of a Council of Ambassadors. The Council is expected to help address the implementation problems that continue to hinder the regional grouping's integration efforts. Be creative, let your spirit soar with creativity. That advice from the Managing Director of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL, Mr. Ember Charles. He was speaking at the closing ceremony and exhibition of the ICT pilot project. The project that started one year ago was funded by the World Bank at a cost of $129,000 EC dollars. Mr. Charles also called on the students to use their ability to create wisely. Over the past few days, I'm sure you've been, if you've been following the news, there are several stories of the consequences of the abuse of ICTs, especially in some schools in North America, which have led to the death of some young people committing suicide, and also has led to some level of intolerant behavior exercise at persons who are not like us. It perhaps doesn't, you may not see the relationship between this and creativity, but it is the kind of freedom of choice that we have around us today that may lead to some of these consequences. I think you have to continue creating Active as an organization will, will, as much as possible, provide whatever support we can to ensure that the project is extended to other, other um, schools throughout Grenada. More than 125 students from five different secondary schools on the island were involved in the project. The principal of the Presentation Brothers College, Dominic Jeremiah, believes students as well as teachers got some good lessons. First of all, it gave our students the opportunity to converse, to discuss, to plan, and to conceptualize an idea, and then systematically set out to make the idea become a reality. Secondly, in order to make the idea become a reality, they quickly concluded in their groups that each student had talent and skills unique to each of them that could be used to achieve the common objective. The project was held in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and ECTEL, who directly supervised it, with an officer assigned to every school. The head of the Information Technology Unit in the Ministry of Education, Leo Cato, believes the project was a success. When this project was conceptualized, the intention was to identify an ICT tool that can be used to encourage critical and analytical thinking among our students. Five schools were chosen to be involved in this pilot project. They're here today. You're all here. The PBC, the Greenville Secondary, St. John's Christian Secondary, St. Mark Secondary, and Bishop's College. The schools, you are given very clear instructions. And I would just like to read some of the instructions that you were given. You were told that your team should consist of at least five persons. The students do not know that, but the teachers do. The team was supposed to have this combination of students. Someone that was perceived to be a quick learner. Someone that was perceived to be an average learner. Someone that was perceived to be a slow learner. Someone that was perceived to be a divergent thinker and a convergent thinker. The project is expected to get started in other secondary schools in the near future. 
With road safety being a critical issue on the island, Digicel is contributing to improve road safety in South St. George. The company is working with officers at the South St. George Police Station to assist the Lollipop citizen wardens build their presence in the community. The staff has donated supplies and a stipend to the group, which has been volunteering its services over the past year by assisting children to cross the road. Digicel staff sees this as a responsibility to be part of the initiative undertaken by the group to assist in community development. We feel that contributing towards the community again it's our responsibility as Inspector Stafford said because it's not just the citizens, individuals within the community. The businesses that are there to also benefit from the protection that the police have to give. They, we also benefit from the camaraderie and the, the, you know, the, the closeness, the family oriented nature. And so because of that again, Digicel in the community doing what we can to assist. I mean, let us thank the police for all their hard work. I know I am I'm from Mount Hartman community, and I see them every time in the Grand Islands Valley area, working with the people, the young, the young men on the block, and so on. And you have seen the great improvement that this has, has created. So again, thank you to the police in general, and more, not, but more specifically to South St. George Police, um, management and staff, and also to the great volunteers that we have in the South assisting the children with the crossing and you know we urge people to volunteer in whatever way they can it's always good it only helps build our country for the future the staff of the South St. George Police Station has also been assisting the group by engaging in community activities and finding ways to better handle road safety. Head of the Citizen Advisory Body, Elwin McQuilkin, says they appreciate the initiative and is pleased to see the relationship that is being established between the organization. He adds that there is a great need for volunteerism in order to help decrease some of the problems being faced by society. More than ever, we need that kind of volunteerism in this country. I mean. Contrary to what other people might say, I long for some of the programs of the revolution which promoted that. That's what is lacking in the society. That's why we have so much problems in society. We need that level of volunteerism. So we don't have to take everything from the past, but we have, must take what is good. So I think that part we must definitely take if we want to move forward, because especially in these hard economic times. The role of parents in the lives of children can never be overemphasized, but in many instances there seem to be a disconnect between parents and their children, especially in the teenage years. It is a challenge that the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development is trying to address. Through the HIV AIDS Education Desk and the Student Support Services Unit, activities have been held throughout the island in an effort to get both parents and students talking to each other. The most recent of these was a retreat on the Sister Isle Karakou for the upper form students of both Hillsborough Secondary and Bishop's College. Wendy Chateau of the Ministry of Education reports. The role of parents in the lives of children can never be overstated, but in many instances there seem to be a disconnect between parents and their children, especially in their teenage years. It is a challenge that the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development is trying to address. Through the HIV AIDS Education Desk and the Student Support Services Unit, activities have been held throughout the island in an effort to get both parents and students talking to each other. The most recent of these was a retreat on the sister isle of Kariakou for the upper form students of both Hillsborough Secondary School and Bishop's College. The session, dubbed Retreat of Reflection and Personal Development, involved 20 students from both schools. HIV AIDS Education Coordinator at the Ministry, Mr. Arthur Pear, says it's a bit of a challenge getting parents to understand the need to connect with their children. This, he says, is imperative if some of the issues affecting young people are to be addressed effectively. The issue is that we certainly would have to go back to the drawing board to engage parents again because um, it is important that we, we really engage parents, get them to come to the table and really discuss issues about their, about their children. Um, I, we, when, when we sat down and we debriefed, we considered it as a, almost like a fact-finding mission. You know, um, what are some of the issues that we really need to put? How we, how we really need to approach parents um, to get them to, you know, talk about things that affect them, um, their concerns over over their students, and how we can best bridge that gap 
that exists between parent and students. Students who attended the retreat were given the opportunity to express their concerns on issues affecting them. Issues that in some cases students say they find difficulty discussing with their parents. So these, are, these are things that students themselves express. That um, sometimes their parents, they don't deal with them. In, in, a, in a manner which they find, you know, allow the student to open up to them. Um, it is just a matter of don't do X, don't do Y, don't do Z. But, you know, students, they want to ask questions to get answers. Answers about their sexuality, for example. Um, answers about not just their sexuality, but about sex, about you know, drugs, about things that affect them. Um, and they find that their parents don't necessarily pay attention to them in that regard. The students, along with qualified counselors from the Student Support Services Unit at the Ministry, discussed conflict resolution, HIV AIDS prevention, drug abuse and behavior modification which will lead to positive change in addressing these issues. Mr. Pear points out that parents must be aware of the messages and influences of the various types of media on their children and the urgent need for them to bridge the gap. The thing about it is too that the media and the internet and the television and so forth, um, they sometimes present the whole issue of sexuality not necessarily in a very good light. And um, parents have to participate and be, be an active participant in teaching young people issues about sex and sexual education and sexuality and so forth. From their experiences and from what the ministry has to offer in terms of um, you know, training and so on. According to Mr. Pear, the students were very receptive and openly shared their feelings on issues that affected them. The presence of the counselors aided in addressing some of those issues and providing guidance for the students. I'm Wendy Chateau of the Public Relations Unit, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. The Spice Boys will spice it up at the National Stadium in October. The Grenada National Team takes on Guadeloupe in the first encounter at the stadium in October. Three days of high-level football at the National Stadium, October 20th, October 22nd, and October 24th. GFA International Football returns to the National Stadium in a big way. Support Team Grenada and spice it up at the football stadium, October 20th, 22nd, and 24th. Look out for tickets at all outlets in Grenada. Lock down these dates. 20, 22nd, 24th October at the National Stadium. GFA International Football. The Ministry of Culture is seeking to create a platform for the work of local writers to be put on display through the annual Spice Wood Festival. The festival engages people in the literature art form and runs from the 19th to the 24th of October. It begins with an opening ceremony on the 19th at the St. George's University. Chief Cultural Officer Thomas Matthew gives an update on some of the activities being held throughout the festival. And on the 20th to the 23rd, we'll be holding what we call a book fair and exhibition, where we'll be putting on display a number of Grenadian authors' work um, for persons to see. We are hoping to have some of the authors who have published have their work ready for persons who are willing to purchase, make it readily available. Um, and during the course of the day, we are intending to have live readings from re some of our authors um, for radio and television. So it should be an interesting um, couple of days where we feature all these um, authors. But I'd like to mention too that we are featuring three main authors this year. And every year um, we intend to feature 
a different group of authors. And the three main authors this year are um, Dave Franklin, um, or Dave Omowali Franklin, um, Miss Mer Dr. Merle Collins, and Mr. Clyde Belfont. And we're featuring them throughout the festival as a Other activities include a storytelling